Hi guys, it's Graham from Roguely Adventures and welcome to What's in the Box and this week it is our inverter charger, our 2000 watt inverter charger from Renogy. Uh, as you know, Renogy gave me a whole load of kit, thank you very much, to upscale our 4x4 Sprinter. And uh, we've gone for a combined inverter charger and here we are. And it is a beast, let me tell you that. So I've taken the plastic wrappers off already it is a two-man lift it is 51 pound 23 kilos and it's an awkward size trust me so as it arrived it came with the courier i had to help the guy bring it in it's got those wrappers on that we send you these plastic things which we cut off and each corner is covered in with more cardboard so uh well packed clearly uh Randy g know that this is a bit of a beast to, to, to lift and shift um so i suspect they may have had some uh, damages with packing it, the extra package packaging on it. Anyway, excuse me. Let's uh, small blade. Let's just break this cellar tape. See what we've got inside. I think, given its size, if you have somebody with you to help you, that would be a sensible thing to try and get it out of the box. Okay, so it's covered in polystyrene and plastic, as you can see. Oh, try and lift it up. Right, well packed from the top there that piece out uh, we have a box of kit I should come back to that in a minute uh, polystyrene either end of this and it is wrapped in plastic as you can see here so again I'm gonna try and get this out now give me while I look like Benny Hill while we try and get, work on this one heavy heavy and big very big so let's have a look firstly in the uh, in the packaging what have we got in the packaging so we have a battery temperature sensor we have the instruction manual so I have the 2000 watt to 20 volts AC supply um, they are very similar specs to the North American version which is the 2000 watt 120 volts AC supply. Um, there is just differences in the uh, input voltages available. So on that point, you cannot, a 220 volt will not work off a 120 volt input circuit and a 120 volt version will not work off a 240 or 220 volt input circuits. Variable, variable voltage around the globe. So like your laptops, you can plug them in and they, they don't really care the voltage. These do. So you can't, uh, you need to be very careful when you go to campsites uh, with different countries with different voltages to your operating system. Uh, and you'll have to, we'll talk about how we deal with that in a later program. So anyway, uh, so the Renogy instruction manuals. So far I found Renogy instruction manuals to be very helpful uh, in plain English. They're quite clear what you need to do. They're clear with the warnings. They're clear about how you set things up. And they're also clear where you can get some more information. The websites correspond generally with the information that's given and the technical information seems to be consistent across all the sources. So I think fair play to Renogy, their instruction manuals are good. We have within the box, we have our Renogy stickers for our van windows. So, hey, we have our QR code for an e-warranty card. So again, I think you register your product with this code and you can see what, uh, how long you've got left to run on it, any warranty claims, etc. And it puts you in touch with the community and some member benefits, so very helpful. And there is a support contact list for support groups around the globe, US, China, UK, Europe, Canada, Germany and Japan, a few other places. So again, very helpful. Within this is also the box for the remote control and the remote switch. So remote box switch wrapped up in uh, a nylon cover. Okay, so that will switch on the, set in the bulkhead somewhere and you can switch things on and off. Uh, very nice. And there is a connection cable for that. 
to take this and this and plug it into this. And there are four screws to screw this panel onto the bulkhead. So, very helpful. There are also, there's no more stickers, but there is an e-warranty card for this one and a support contact, support network contact list as well. So that is there as well. That's a, another piece towards this. Now this product is not Bluetooth enabled. And I don't think it even works with the Renergy One. So although it is the heart of the system, there is nothing connected. There is no connections to it to show you, to tell you what's going on. There is, however, a screen on the front to tell you what's going on. And this is also where you set it up. Now there are four battery voltage types uh, and eight voltage pre-prescribed voltage settings alone. It will do AGM, FL, gel, and lithium. You can change the frequency from 50 hertz to 60 hertz, and there's a variable way of doing it. And if you have your own specific battery, which is not the norm, there are facilities to reset that too. So it's quite a big beast. In the input current or output current for the battery is anywhere between five and 65 amps which means that the cable running has to be, for the 2000 watt inverter, has to be the uh, two slash zero AWG, which is a 70 mil squared. Or uh, for the 3000, you have to use the four dash, four slash zero, 107 millimeter squared. So they're big cables, um, 200 amp for the 2000 watt version and 300 amp for the 3000 watt version. The chassis needs to be grounded. So not only are you connecting to your batteries and that would connect to the earth, this casing must also be connected to earth and it is an eight AWG, I think there's a 10 millimeter square cable as well. So please do that as well. It's a separate cable that runs from this casing to an earth port on your, your van. And if you have a separate earth point to the other points for your battery, that's a probably better better way of doing it. Now, in terms of operations, this is provided in uh, what they call is a utility priority, which means that you have AC power coming in and you have AC power coming out and the AC power is for running the utilities, but it's also charging the battery. There is a facility to set it at battery priority, which means that the charging comes in AC comes in and it charges the battery and it is the battery only that charges out uses the inverter to power the AC so so this makes it a uninterrupted power supply uh, so anything that you're running on AC that you do not want to be disrupted say I don't know a health machine a medical a medical machine that's for your, for your health or uh, a, a computer system that you don't want to drop or whatever then it will continue to run off the battery and as long as that battery is charged by AC then that will not interrupt. Regardless of those two utility or battery setups, um, there is a transfer switch on here. So the transfer switch operates in terms of um, a power AC power supply going out to your utilities. Uh, and if the power's incoming power is disrupted, it swaps over to your battery, uh, battery inverter, battery powered inverter, and it's in milliseconds. So that's quite good, but it, there is an interruption. And it also has, if your generator has a, the enablement, it has an auto start. So if you lose your AC supply and the generator, uh, sorry, AC supply falls out and your generator is ready to go, it will kick over and start your generator and that will provide power too. Um, so if you are a new utility supply, you will see a, a uh, you should probably see an impact because there'll be a blip uh, as you swap over power supplies and it may be, you know, you pop out uh, from AC supply from the pedestal suddenly onto the battery and then back into the generator and so you might have a few little glitches when it happens if that is important that you don't have any disruptions that's when you would set up your uh, battery priority uh, set up on here and so whatever is happening here in, in terms of AC and transferring across it will not impact the uh, output of the inverter to your supply so that's quite a so, so the other benefit of this facility um, with the transfer switch and the auto generator switch is that that you can now have one set of sockets 
a, a alternating current sockets across the van that is supplied by whatever AC system is powered up to it. So in the other world, the old world, when you had little inverters and your own battery charger, uh, it you could um, inadvertently connect a shore power to a circuit at the same time you have the inverter running on the same circuit and that would be a bad day so without a transfer switch so we might scrap all that shit anyway so this is it this is the inverter charger uh it's 20 odd inches long 22 inches long 20 inches long 11 inches high and about seven inches wide the connectors are all on this end there is only an on off switch and there's an ac in and out and the batteries sorry uh, and the battery can enable connectors in here and this is the connector for the remote shower you have to remove this cover to install it so let's have a look Trip switches on the side there for the input inverter and charger outputs. Connections to the battery, positive and negative. There are the connections to the in, uh, power supply in and AC inverter out. And these are the connecting cables for your remote metering. Okay, so there is two ports here the one on the left is for the battery sensor and the one on the right is for a future development maybe that's when they're going to start connecting the energy one who knows so that is uh the setup for this so this is not a plug and play per se you really need to know what you're doing uh and you have to have a really good idea about um securing this and connecting it in the in the right way do not get the inputs and the outputs of the ac in particular mixed up make sure it's all switched off and discharge it uh, and i would do all the connections before i'd uh, plug in the batteries and then plug in the batteries to it and then put the power on the ac so this is going to be quite good fun uh, i'm looking forward to putting this together and I will, in a later program, install it in the van and show you how I get on. So I hope this has been helpful for you and informative. It certainly is for me. And uh, please let me know if there's anything more I can do in terms of these, these videos to help you understand what it is you're getting into and what you're buying. But that's Graham. This is Moby Adventures. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.